everyone. <laughs> uh, I've been long. <laughs> I can't even talk. I've been gone for a while. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, I did end up deleting all of my videos on my channel. The reason why I did that because is because someone in my family actually found my YouTube channel, <clears throat> which I was surprised about because I only have like 300 subscribers. And anyways, that kind of freaked me out because I was ready to talk about what happened to me, but I wasn't ready for my whole family to know. Um, the only people that know are my parents, my brothers, you know. So I just decided to delete it, but then I was thinking about it for a while. The reason why I decided to even speak up about it is because I want to help other, you know, people that have been through the same thing as me or are going through the same thing as me or just want to talk, um, you know, about things. And I was getting a lot of feedback from you guys that were DMing me from my Instagram and either asking questions or just wanting to talk about things and being really supportive so that's the reason why I'm deciding to put it back up um, as you can see I don't have purple hair anymore <laughs> and the camera the quality of this video is probably going to be a lot better because I'm using a camera other than my phone and I think I did it I was in my car and now I'm in a room so yeah anyways I'm going to be talking about it again <laughs> I haven't even started. <laughs> And I'm already tearing up. So, anyway, um, <laughs> okay, I was not expecting to be this emotional this fast. I might have to cut that out. Okay, so, um, how it all started was he actually began molesting me before he did it so it started small like he would come behind me and he would rub his private parts against mine and um it just started getting worse as the time went by and if you guys wanted me to talk about that i can make a whole separate video about that because that was just crazy so when it first happened i kind of just ignored it and then when it started happening again, I just thought that's how he acted because my family, like my mom, she cares about us, but she's not the loving type. Like, she's not someone that used to hug us, tell, told us, like, she loved us and stuff like that. And neither did my dad. He was more loving, like, he would play with us or buy us things and, I don't know, try to be a dad figure, something like that. And, but her I'm just gonna say her her dad was more like she he would tickle them like pick them up hug them all the time so like when he was doing things like that I thought that's just the type of person he was and I just wasn't used to it because that's not how my parents act but then as it started getting worse I realized okay like this is making me really uncomfortable this is not how things should be so I stopped going to their house for a while and they would sleep over my house because it was my best friend and her younger sister and um then her mom was like oh you sleep over they've been sleeping over your house all the time why don't you just come to my, to our house now and it got to the point where I would say I have homework or I have a project that they asked or they would ask my father and he would say, yeah, because they were my best friends, you know. So there was this one time where I went, and I don't remember the day before, but I remember the next day, which is what happened to me. And um, I remember waking up, and her family had actually gone out. I don't remember where they were going, but I know they were going to be out all morning and afternoon. And the only people were um, 
at the house was my best friend, her older sister, and I. And I was pretty relieved. I was like, finally, I don't have to, you know, be scared, watch my back. I can go get a snack and not have to turn around real fast to see if he's there. Um, I was just so happy, relieved that they, well, he wasn't there. And um, anyways, I had gotten dressed for the day. I was all ready. I wanted to get it over with in the morning. That way, you know, I don't have to be walking around the house, like going back and forth to the bathroom all day. Um, so anyways, we were watching a movie in her mom's room because she had a bigger TV and we were watching the movie. Then I hear, well, we both hear a knock on the door. She goes to get the door and it's her dad and my heart drops in my ass because I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like you were supposed to be out with, you know, your wife, your kids, whatever. And now you're here. So right off the bat, I just had a really bad feeling and just like a sick feeling in my stomach. And he ended up going in the room with us. And I had told my best friend, I'm like, we should just go back to your room. Like, he could just be here. It's fine. And she's like, no, it's fine. Like, we're going to finish the movie. And then, of course, he says, it's fine. You guys can stay there. So um, anyways, she points out that like he has a gray hair. So he was like, oh, take them out. He's like, for every white hair that you take out, then I'll give you some money. <clears throat> and my friend was like, yeah, so we can go to the corner store and buy some snacks or whatever. I was like maybe 12 at the time. And um, so we started doing that. And I forgot how much money we got or how much money was our goal. But we were getting near and then she was like, oh, you can... Oh, I just said my name. <laughs> Anyways, blank, you can, I don't want you guys to know my name. She was like, you can finish, um, you can finish the rest while I go shower and get dressed because I was already dressed and I didn't want to be there alone. And I was like, no, it's okay. I'll just wait for you or let's just finish up. Like, it's not that far of a walk. Just trying to make any excuse to not be there alone with him. And anyways, after just back and forth, I was like, whatever, I'll just do this, get this over with, and go to her room. So that happened, and I had finished, and I was just sitting there awkwardly, because I was sitting on the, on the bed. And he had gotten up and looked out the window, and it didn't take me, like, it took me years to realize what he was actually doing when he got up and looked out the window. What he was doing, it was was he was looking out the window to see if anybody came home but what he told me was hey did you look at um the swing set well it was just one swing that i made for my friends and i was like yeah i saw it blah blah blah, blah. and then when he turns back um he like crouched crouched down to where i was at, to where i was sitting and like he just like smelled me and he was like, oh, <laughs> he was like, He said, um, oh, you smell really good. And then he began to like kiss my neck and he had molested me for a really long time, but that was his, the first time that he ever like put his lips on my body. So when he did that, like he started, it's not, it wasn't like one kiss. He literally just like was rubbing his lips all against me and I pushed him again I was sitting down and I like pushed him because he was crouched over me and I was like what are you doing and I think the reason why he raped me that day was because out of like I don't know it must have been like a year that he was molesting me out of the whole time this was the first time that I said something and the first time that I put my hands on him and telling him to basically stop. And um, 
I think, you know, he did it because in his mind, he was probably like, she's going to say something, so might as well do it. Because if I get in trouble, at least I got something out of it. I don't know. Like, he's fucking sick in the head. I don't know what he was thinking, but that's when everything happened. And it happened so fast, but it did not feel fast. Like, it felt like forever. And after it happened, well, when it happened, I kind of froze and I didn't know what to do, and my mind wasn't processing enough. And the best way <coughs> to explain what happened to me was, it's kind of like when you're watching a scary movie and the killer is behind the character or the actor, and they're just standing there and you're screaming like, oh, if I was in that situation, I would have been out or I would have tried to grab something and hit the guy or done something. But until you're in that situation, you don't know how you're going to react. You don't know how your body's going to react. So by the time that I was able to react, like he was already done. And I just like, after it happened, I just, um, you know, tried to pick myself up and I went to uh, my friend's room and I had just told her like my I have really bad cramps and I just want to go home like I didn't feel good and I ended up going home and yeah I didn't tell anyone the reason why I didn't tell anybody for years until I was like almost a freshman and I was only in like sixth grade when this happened so I didn't tell anybody because growing up my parents didn't have a lot of money like my dad was the only one that was working and for as long as I could remember we were always always living with people or family because my dad couldn't afford to rent an apartment and for the first time ever we actually had an apartment we had a place you know it wasn't our house, but it was our apartment. We didn't have to share it with anybody else. And things were only getting better from there, and I didn't want to ruin that. And, you know, I have siblings that I have to think about too. So in my head, I was like, if I tell my parents or if I tell my dad, he's just going to react. He's going to, like, go there, try to kill him, put him in the hospital. I don't know. Like, there were just so many things running through my mind. And I was like, the last thing that I need is for us to get taken away or my dad to go to jail <clears throat> and I I just didn't want to ruin anything and my advice to you guys <laughs> is to is to just talk about it and just tell someone because it's gonna fuck you over in the long run I have so much pro <laughs> I have so much problems I dealt with so much not talking to someone and I'm gonna be 21 next month and it just fucks you up and i'm slowly getting better but it still fucks you up and you should just tell someone talk to someone about it and if it's happening to you speak up about it because if i if i told somebody about what was going on when i was getting molested i would have never gotten raped I know that because later, like now, I realize that's what they do. That's what rapists do. They test you. They touch you to see if you're going to say something. And it just, they add a little bit more. Like I said, it, by the time, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse until it happened. 
So if this is something that's happening to you, speak up about it because, you know, you can get raped at any moment. And you shouldn't even be, you should not let somebody be touching you like that. And, yeah. Well, I didn't think I would cry again. <laughs> Anyways, that's my advice to everyone. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know in the comments or I'll be putting my Instagram in the description below if I know how to do that <laughs> because I don't know how to work this thing. Um, I'll do that and you guys can DM me or ask me any questions. I don't know what my next video will be about so if you guys have any recommendations you can leave that down below and thank you and I'll see you guys in the next video.